What's up? It's Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com here at the Fox Sports Southwest Studios. Just got off the air on High School Scoreboard Live, but I've got my instant reaction to week three of the Texas high school football season. If I look tired, it is because it is 1.07 a.m. I just got done with five hours of broadcasting, and here I am doing a few more minutes for you. So don't ever say that I don't love you. All right, let's get to some games. This is going to be like scatter shooting. Whatever comes to my mind, I will definitely forget some big games, so forgive me for that. My big result from the weekend actually is Lexington over Rockdale. I think that's a great win for the Eagles. Uh, we knew Jared Kerr was special. We knew he had a capability of putting a team on his back, but they come through late to beat Rockdale in a very impressive victory. Uh, Lexington, Lexington's starting to turn the corner in my mind as far as contention is concerned. That's a that's a great win for for the Eagles. I'm 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 starting to think about them in, in, a, in a new light. That's that's a really impressive win. Lampasas beats Wimberley in a game that kind of went uh, about what we thought it was. You know, Lampasas' offense came out and they were fantastic. It's it's much more than just Ace Whitehead, right? Jack Jerome, their running back. Uh, they've got another Kate, uh, Kate Brister, their running back. They, they run the ball well. they got great receivers. The defense is doing, you know, its part. It's doing pretty well. Uh, Wimberley's offense continues to be like okay. I want to see them kind of take that next step. I'm not really ready to hit the the panic. Let's also remember this is a 4 AD1 over a 4 AD2. Weight class matters, but Lampasas continues to roll. They'll be the number three team. Uh, number two team in 4 Division One was La Vega. Wiggle La Vega goes to San Marcos and beats Cal Allen uh, in a slugfest. And about what we thought it was going to be, two teams just throwing haymakers at one another and just, you know, beating each other to a bloody pulp. Um, you know, La Vega leans on their defense. Offense looked okay, uh, good enough. You know, Jordan Rogers, it sounds like, played the majority of the game at quarterback and, and you know, acquitted himself pretty well. That is always going to be, you know, Don Hyde did an interview at halftime of that game, and he, and he said something really important, which he said, you know, we're just looking for a quarterback to go out there and be a game manager, and I think that's what they got tonight. And and, uh, and more importantly, they let the defense lead the way, shut down, uh, for the most part, a really, really talented uh, Cal Allen attack, although it sounds like Jeremiah Earls may have been injured in this game. It's certainly something to keep an eye on. Uh, the number one team in 4A Division One, Argyle, goes and beats Salina. It was not as impressive as their first two wins. One thing I will say, Salina always plays Argyle tough. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they have something personal against them, but they always play them tough. So Argyle, that sets up a big showdown next week. Argyle, La Vega, it's going to be fun. Calhoun, Portland Vaught Calhoun beats El Campo in a game that was two teams that just ran the ball at each other, and Calhoun comes up with the big stops. Uh, I I just, I really like this Calhoun team. I think that their defense is starting to round into form, and I think that the way that they run the ball and that offense and the flying veer is just really hard to stop. I like this Calhoun team. So, uh, color me impressed by Calhoun. Uh, Hamlin goes to Albany and just beats them up. Just beats them up. Uh, Hamlin is out to prove that they are not a flash in the pan, and I think they are starting to prove that uh, more and more so each week. So good stuff from Hamlin. Winthorst's win over Archer City. I come away really impressed with both teams. I think Archer City is is legit. I think that they 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 were. I think they acquitted themselves very well in this game. Uh, but Winthorst gets the win. Good win for that squad. That's a kind of a sleeper in in that uh, in two A Division two. Melissa over Pottsboro. Melissa jumped out to a huge lead. Pottsboro tried to make a comeback when Braden Plyler was back for the second half. Remember, Braden Plyler did not play in the first half. Uh, but I also think Melissa was the better team in this game. And Melissa is a team you need to start taking seriously in 4A Division 2. 4A Division 2, Carthage and Pleasant Grove are going to, and, and whenever Western or Stark plays, they're going to suck up a lot of the oxygen in the room. But Melissa is kind of on that next tier of really, really interesting teams in 4A Division 2. Uh, Springtown beats Connolly. Uh, Springtown, nice bounce back. Uh, you know, that, that win, that loss to Glen Rose in the opener seems like forever ago. But uh, Connolly, two in a row, and the offense, again, just kind of sputters. Uh, a little worried about that. Uh, under the radar, but China Spring beats Brownwood on the road. Great win for China Spring. I'm I'm a big fan of Emmanuel Abdallah, their running back, and if they keep doing this, they're going to be fantastic. By the way, China Spring land passes next week. I'm into that. Uh, Sixth man game of the week was Borden County and Rankin. Borden County comes from behind and beats the number one team. 1A one Division 1 is going to be wild. I'm very interested to see what Granger Huntress, our six man insider, says about our six man rankings. 1A Division 1 is going to be crazy. Maybe number one Jonesboro. Maybe number one uh, Sterling City. Who gets Borden County next week? That's going to be interesting. By the way, Westbrook beat Lorraine as well. So Westbrook is undefeated. So a little bit of chaos in 1A Division 1. Um, be remiss if I didn't mention Mount Vernon. Put it on, Paul Pewitt. Keep an eye on Mount Vernon. Uh, as a team that is rolling right now, the offense has looked fantastic. Offense is really humming. 
And uh, the one thing that I will say is that they are going to be in that region, region two, with Grandview, with Malakoff, with Pottsboro. That's it. I believe they're in the same district as Malakoff or Potts. I think they're in the same district as Pottsboro. So big tests to come, but so far so good. Mount Vernon put a hurting on Paul Pewitt. Two things I want to shout out. The crazy game of the night was Chapel Hill and Terrell. Uh, Chapel Hill outlasts them in a wild shootout. I think we know what Jeff Reardon's squad is going to be now, which is like they are just going to score at will, and then the all the defense is going to be like, let's just get like a couple stops and win. Very, very entertaining brand of football there for Jeff Reardon and uh, Bulldogs. They are three and out to start the year. And a shout out to the Dimebox Longhorns. Dimebox uh, gets a win tonight. Uh, I think they beat Prairie Lee. I don't have that in front of me, so don't hold me to that. But uh, they uh, they get their first ever win as a UIL program. Congratulations to the Longhorns of Dimebox. Okay, it's 1.13 in the morning. I am very tired. I'm going to go home. I'll upload this. Uh, complete coverage of TexasFootball.com. Of all things Texas high school football, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.